WorldCom Edu. Elite Children's Classics. The Red Shoes. Once there was a very pretty little girl. But she was very poor. So in the summer, she had no shoes to wear. And in the winter, she wore big wooden shoes which hurt her feet. In the middle of her village, there lived an old shoemaker's wife. She saved extra pieces of red cloth so that she could make some shoes for the little girl, whose name was Karen. One day, Karen's mother died, and the old shoemaker's wife gave Karen the shoes she had made for her. The red shoes were not very pretty and not suitable to wear to a funeral. But they were the only shoes Karen had to wear. So she put them on. On the way to her mother's funeral, a carriage passed by with a kind old lady inside. She saw Karen and felt sorry for her. So she said to the priest, Give me the little girl. I will take care of her. So Karen went with the old woman. Karen thought the old woman wanted to take her because of her red shoes. But the old woman said they were ugly and had them burned. Karen now had new clothes and looked very nice. She was taught to read and sew, and people said she was very pretty. But her mirror said, You are more than pretty. You are beautiful. Once, the queen traveled through the village with her daughter, the princess. Karen saw the little princess who had on a white dress and beautiful red shoes. Karen thought, Those red shoes are the most beautiful shoes in the world. Now, Karen was old enough to go to a special ceremony so that she could become a member of the church. New clothes and new shoes were to be bought for the special ceremony. Karen and the old lady went to the rich shoemaker's shop in the village. In his shop, there was a large glass case with many shoes and boots. In the case, Karen saw a pair of beautiful red shoes that were just like the ones the princess had worn. Now, the old lady couldn't see very well. So when Karen tried on the shoes, she said, They must be made of very good leather because they are so shiny. The old lady bought the red shoes, thinking that they were black. Karen wore her new red shoes to church. And everyone began looking at them because they were unsuitable to wear to church. Karen thought that even the pictures in the church were looking at her red shoes. She only thought about her red shoes all during the church service. She didn't sing or hear anything the priest said. In the afternoon, the old lady was told about Karen's red shoes, and she said Karen was bad and told her not to wear the red shoes to church again. She also said she must wear her old black ones. The next Sunday, Karen was getting ready for church and she looked at her old black shoes, and then at the red shoes, and decided to put on the red ones. 
The sun shone brightly when Karen and the old lady went to church. Near the church door, there was an old man who had a long red beard. He asked the old lady if she would like her shoes cleaned. Then Karen put out her feet so the old man could clean hers too. Look what pretty dancing shoes, said the old man, and he touched the bottoms of the shoes. When Karen and the old lady entered the church, everyone again looked at Karen's red shoes, and the pictures looked at them too. And once more, Karen thought only of her red shoes and forgot to sing. Or pray. After church, the old lady got into the carriage, and Karen started to get in when the old man said, "Look, what pretty dancing shoes!" Karen danced a little, but when she tried to stop dancing, she couldn't. She danced around the church, and the driver of the carriage had to catch her and put her into the carriage. Still, her feet went on dancing, and she kicked the old lady by accident. So the old lady and the driver took off Karen's red shoes, and her feet stopped dancing. At home. The shoes were put in a closet, but Karen liked to look at them. Now the old lady became very sick, and it was Karen's job to take care of her. But there was going to be a great dance in the village, and Karen was invited. She looked at the old lady, and at the red shoes later. And decided that it would be okay to leave the old lady alone just for a few hours. So Karen put on the red shoes and went to the dance. When she began dancing, she found that again she couldn't stop. And when she wanted to go right, the shoes took her to the left. She danced out into the street, and into the dark woods. She danced and danced. Then she saw something shining. She thought it was the moon, but it was the old man from the church. He nodded his head and said, "Look what pretty dancing shoes!" Karen was afraid. And wanted to take off her red shoes and throw them away, but they stayed tightly on her feet. And she danced through the woods, over the fields, in the rain and sunshine, day and night. But the nights were the worst of all. She danced toward the churchyard and to the open church door. There she saw an angel in a long white robe with big wings. He looked very angry and held a large sword. "You shall dance," he said. "Dance in your red shoes until you are cold and your body is ill. You shall dance from door to door." Where proud bad children live, you shall knock on their doors, and they will be afraid of you. You shall dance, dance. I'm so sorry," cried Karen. But she didn't hear what the angel said because her shoes took her away out into the field. One morning, she passed by the old woman's house, and could hear singing inside. A moment later, the lady was carried out, but she was dead. Karen continued to dance. 
She danced in the dark night through many plants and bushes that scratched her legs until she was bleeding. She danced across a field to a little house. A man who killed bad people lived there. She knocked on the window and said, "Come out, come out! I cannot come in because I can't stop dancing." You probably don't know me. I cut off bad people's heads with my axe," said the man. "Don't cut off my head," Karen said. "But please help me." The man cut off Karen's feet, and the shoes danced away with the feet into the woods. The man made a pair of wooden feet for Karen, and she thought, "Now I can go to church, and everyone will forgive me." When she came to the church, the red shoes were there dancing in front of the church. So she was afraid and went away. The next week, Karen tried to go to church again, but the shoes were still dancing at the door again, and Karen went away once more. She went to the priest and asked him to give her a job as a servant. She worked very hard and was very kind and gentle. She sat and listened every night to the priest reading the Bible out loud. When she heard people talk about beautiful dresses and things, she would feel sad. The next Sunday, everyone went to church, and she was asked to go too, but she looked sadly, with tears in her eyes, at her feet, and didn't go. She went alone to her little room, which had only a bed and a chair. Here she sat and read the Bible. As she read it, the wind carried the music from the church into her room, and she looked up, crying, and said, "Oh Lord, help me!" Then. The sun shone brightly, and an angel stood in front of her. It was the same angel, but this time he held a branch with roses on it, not a sword. He touched the walls and ceiling, and the room grew larger. A star was shining, and then Karen could see the inside of the church, with everyone inside. And even the pictures were smiling. The church had come to Karen. I am forgiven, she cried. The children singing sounded very lovely, and the clear sunshine shining through the window all made Karen feel truly happy. Her heart became so filled with peace and happiness that it. Broke. Her spirit flew up to heaven, and nobody asked about her red shoes again. The Little Match Girl. It was the last evening of the year. It was New Year's Eve. But what a cold and snowy last evening it was! In the cold, dark evening, a little girl who had no hat or shoes was walking alone through the streets. When she left her house, she was wearing slippers, but they weren't very useful because they were much too big for her feet. They were so big that the little girl's mother had used them, but the little girl put them on anyway. The little girl lost the slippers when she fell down on the road, where two carriages passed by very quickly. 
One slipper was lost, but the other one was stolen by a boy who ran away with it. The boy thought that he could use the slipper himself some day as a cradle, when he had children of his own. So, now the little girl walked along with nothing at all on her feet. Her feet were now very red and blue-looking because they were so cold. In an old apron and in her hand, she carried several matches, which she wanted to sell to people who were walking along the street. So far, nobody bought any matches from the little girl. She had no money at all. The little match girl was cold, hungry, and shivering as she walked along the street. The snowflakes fell on the little girl's long blonde hair, but she didn't care. She was looking at all the shining lights in the windows and smelling the delicious roast goose that was being cooked in someone's home for New Year's dinner. In a corner between two buildings, the little girl sat down. She pulled her legs in close to her body, hoping to get warm. But she was still very cold. The little girl knew she could not return home because she had not sold any matches and therefore she could not bring any money home to her parents. She also knew that her father would probably beat her for not selling any matches. Anyway, it was very cold at home because their house had large holes in the roof, and the wind blew through them, making the inside very cold. The little girl's hands were numb from the cold, but she had an idea. If she could take out a match and rub it against the wall, she could warm her hands. She took out a match from her apron and rubbed it against the wall. The end of the match became a small, bright flame, like that of a candle. When the girl held her hands over the match, they became warm. She imagined that she was sitting in front of a beautiful fireplace with a warm fire burning in it. It was so comfortable. But soon, the match went out, and the warm fireplace disappeared, and she was left holding nothing but a burnt piece of match. The little girl rubbed a second match against the wall, and this time she looked into the flame and imagined a room. In the room was a table with a snow-white tablecloth, shining silverware, and a cooked goose with apples and plums set around it. More wonderful still, the goose suddenly jumped up from the plate it was on and walked along the floor with a knife and fork still in its breast. It started to walk toward the little girl, and then the match went out, and there was nothing left but the cold, dark wall. She quickly struck another match and imagined she could see a Christmas tree and herself sitting under it. It was the most beautiful Christmas tree she had ever seen. It was even more beautiful than the rich storekeeper's Christmas tree, which she had seen when she was looking through his glass window. There were many colorful decorations and candles burning on the tree. The little girl tried to touch the tree, 
but just then, the match went out. The Christmas lights rose higher and then turned into stars in the night sky. Then, one of the stars fell down, making a streak of fire. Now, someone is dying, thought the little girl, because her grandmother had told her that when a star fell down from the sky, it meant that someone's spirit went up to be with God. The little girl's grandmother was the only person that had loved her, but now she was dead. The little girl rubbed another match against the wall, and once more there was a small light. In the brightness, the little girl could clearly see her lovely old grandmother. Grandmother! cried the little girl. Oh, please take me with you. I know you will go when the match goes out. Then you will disappear like the warm fireplace, the delicious food, and the beautiful Christmas tree. And then, very quickly, the little girl rubbed all of the matches that she had left because she didn't want her grandmother to disappear. The matches all burned so brightly that it seemed like daylight. The grandmother became very large and beautiful, and she took the little girl and held her in her arms. Both the grandmother and the little girl flew very brightly and happily high above the earth, where there wasn't any cold, hunger, or worry. They went up to be with God. But in the corner, against the wall, sat the poor little girl who had red cheeks and a smiling face. She had frozen to death on the last evening of the old year. The New Year's sun had risen, but the little girl sat there cold, stiff and dead, with only the burned matches in her hand. She wanted to become warm, said some people who had found her frozen to death in the corner. No one knew what a beautiful thing the little girl had seen, and the happiness she felt when she went to be with her grandmother and begin a new life in heaven. The Emperor's New Clothes Many years ago, there was an emperor who cared more about his clothes than anything else. He was not interested in his soldiers, his countrymen, or even going to the theater. He spent all of his time and money buying new clothes. The emperor had different clothes for every hour of the day. While most kings in the world were busy at meetings, the emperor was busy showing people his new clothes. In the large, happy city where the emperor lived, many strangers came to visit. One day, two cunning strangers came to the city and pretended to be tailors. They said that they could make the best cloth in the whole world and that it was a very special cloth. The colors were unusually bright and clear and it was just right for making the most beautiful patterns. The cloth was even more special because it could only be seen by intelligent, hard-working people and that stupid, lazy people would not be able to see it. Those would make the finest clothes, thought the emperor. If I wore such clothes... 
I would be able to know which men are hardworking and intelligent, and which men are not. Yes, he decided. I must have some clothes made from that cloth. So the emperor gave the two cunning strangers a lot of money, so they would start making him some clothes immediately. Soon afterward, the two strangers set up their machines and pretended to be working. They asked for the finest silk. And the most beautiful jewels and gold, but they were very clever. They put the jewels into their pockets, and hid the fine silk. They pretended to be working until late at night, but there was nothing on their machines. I would like to see some of this wonderful cloth, thought the emperor. Although he knew he was good at his job, he became a little bit nervous when he thought about going to see the clothes himself. What if the cloth was invisible to me? He thought. Everyone would be sure that I am lazy and stupid. So the emperor decided to send his honest old minister to see how the cloth looked. He knew that his minister was both hardworking and intelligent. The minister went to the room where the two strangers were pretending to work. Oh no! Thought the wise old minister as he opened his eyes wider. I can't see anything at all. Knowing that only lazy people. Could not see the cloth. He did not say anything at all. The two strangers asked the minister to come over and take a closer look at the cloth. They pointed to the empty machine and asked, "What do you think of the colors and the pattern we have chosen?" The poor old minister thought. Am I so stupid? Am I so bad at my job that I can't see anything? I must not let anyone know of my stupidity and laziness. So he stood there for a while and finally said, "The cloth is very beautiful. I will go and tell the emperor. We are very happy that you like it." Said the two cunning men, and they talked about the colors and pattern of the imaginary cloth. When you see the emperor, said the two men, please tell him that we will need a little more money for more silk and gold. The minister nodded and went back to see the emperor. When the two men received more money for silk and gold. They put it in their pockets and pretended to work late into the night on the empty machines. After a while, the emperor sent another man to look at the clothes, but this honest man, like the minister before him, could see nothing. Isn't the cloth beautiful? Asked the two men. I am not stupid," thought the honest man. "Perhaps it is my job that I am not good at." He thought for a minute and said to the two tailors, "Yes, it really is wonderful cloth. I I will go and tell the emperor." Everyone in the city was talking about how lovely the emperor's new clothes would be. The emperor himself wanted to see the cloth while it was still on the machine, so he went to the workroom himself, along with his minister and several other honest men. When they looked at the empty machine, the old minister said. Look 
how wonderful the cloth is. What do you think of the bright colors and lovely pattern? All of the people in the room agreed and nodded their heads. What? thought the emperor. I can't see anything at all. I am I stupid? Am I a bad emperor? He waited for a minute and said, It really is excellent cloth. He looked down at the empty machine and saw nothing. The other men also looked down at the machine and saw nothing. But they too said that the cloth was lovely because they believed that everyone else could see the cloth. Everyone told the emperor that he should wear his new clothes to the big parade that would be held in a few days, and he agreed. The night before the parade, the two tailors stayed up all night pretending to be working on the emperor's new clothes. Everyone could see that they were working hard, trying to get the clothes finished, so that the emperor could wear them in the parade the next day. They pretended to take the imaginary cloth off of the machine, cut it and sew it together. And at last, in the early morning, the imaginary clothes were finished. On the morning of the parade, the emperor came along with all of his noblemen to where the two cunning tailors were working. The two tailors lifted up one arm of the imaginary clothes and said, See, here is the coat and here are the pants. They are as light as a feather. You might think that you weren't wearing anything because they are so light and comfortable. Yes, said the nobleman, but they couldn't see anything either. Would the great emperor like to put the elegant new clothes on now here in front of the mirror? The two cunning men asked. The emperor took off his clothes, and the two cunning men pretended to put the new clothes on the emperor. And the emperor turned around, looking at himself in the mirror. Oh, how wonderful they look! They fit perfectly. The colors and pattern are excellent, everyone said. The parade is ready to begin, one of the noblemen said. Well, I am ready, said the emperor. Do my new clothes look good on me? And he turned to look at himself in the mirror again, because he wanted the other people to think he could see the clothes. <laughs> Two noblemen bent down to pick up the long train of the coat and pretended to hold it up in the air. But they didn't see or feel anything. They also wanted the other people to believe they saw something. So the emperor went out and joined the parade in the street. Everyone watching knew about the special cloth. So they all pretended to see it because they didn't want the emperor to think that they were bad workers or stupid. They said, How wonderful the emperor's new clothes look! They are so elegant! They are the finest clothes in the world! Finally, a little child cried out, the emperor has no clothes on. Soon, everyone was whispering what the child had said. And at last, all the people of the city shouted, The child is right. The emperor doesn't have any clothes on. 
the emperor heard what the people said and began to believe them. But he thought to himself, I must finish the parade. As for the two noblemen, they pretended to hold on to the imaginary train of the coat tighter, and they walked on with their faces red with shame. 